Hey, what's up guys? I'm Nitej and in this video, I'm going to explain what is the open close principle in software programming and why it is important to write code which sticks to the rules defined by this principle. Open close principle is one of the solid design principles. By its classic definition, it means that programming and software entities should be open to extension but not to modification. In simple terms, it means that if we want to add new features to existing code, then we should not rely so much on modifying the existing code but to extend the code whenever we can. The logic behind this is that whenever we make modifications to existing code, then it can have far-reaching impact on many parts of an application. Any changes to the existing code will mean that the code areas which depend on the code being changed will have to be checked as well. Any functionality and features which depends on the changed code will have to be tested and this means actual money that a company or the client has to spend on man hours. So it is always convenient and effective to simply extend the existing entity to implement the new feature instead of modifying the existing code. The basic idea to implement open close principle in object oriented programming languages is to design the system in such a way that when we have to implement new features then either the modification to existing code is very minimal or we create a new class to implement the new feature or functionality. This is most commonly done by inheriting classes from base classes. Sometimes even the inheritance from a base class is not enough and we need interfaces or abstract classes to act as base contracts. To be able to extend the base functionality by creating new classes. Well, enough of this theoretical stuff. Let's now see a simple code example which does not follow open close principle and what can be done to fix it. So this is a C-sharp console application opened up in Visual Studio and in this code example I am going to demonstrate how a pizza maker class can be extended to add the functionalities for baking new kinds of pizzas. First, I'm going to create a pizza maker which is not really following the open close principle. So let's just do that. Along with this pizza maker, we are also going to need two more classes, the pizza oven class and the pizza ingredients class. These classes will just act as placeholders to let you know what the code is exactly doing. Now in this pizza maker class, I'm going to create a new private field for the pizza oven and let's just call it oven and now let's just create a constructor for the pizza maker class and within this constructor we can initialize the pizza oven object so this can be done by calling new pizza oven so for this pizza maker class to be able to make a new pizza we are going to add a new function to it with the name make pizza and this function is going to accept the argument of the type of pizza which is going to be an enumeration by the name pizza type. Let's just create that enumeration over here. So enum pizza type and for now I'm just going to add a single type of pizza which is going to be the tomato pizza or a pizza with the tomato toppings. Now within this make pizza function based on the type of pizza which is provided in the argument we are going to determine what kind of pizza we are going to make. For any pizza first we are going to initialize the pizza ingredients and then we are going to use this pizza oven to bake the pizza by using the ingredients which are being supplied as an argument to this bake function so for the tomato pizza first let's just initialize the ingredients for that we can just create a new pizza ingredients type over here so pizza ingredients and now I can just initialize this over here. This is going to be a tomato pizza so I'm just going to write a statement over here like writing a line to the console which says making tomato pizza to differentiate between the different pizzas that we are making and then finally we can call underscore oven dot bake and then we can provide the pizza ingredients as the arguments for this bake function and that's pretty much it to bake the tomato pizza. It could happen that the type of pizza which has been supplied to this make pizza function as an argument is not matching with any of the cases which have been created over here. 
so in that case we can create a default case and within this default case we can just bake a base pizza without any kind of flavor or toppings now in order for us to bake a tomato flavored pizza first we will have to create a new pizza maker class and then we will just call pizza maker dot make pizza by supplying the type of pizza as an argument which in our case is going to be a tomato pizza so over here if you have been paying close attention to the design of this pizza maker class you must have realized that in order for us to add more flavors or more types of pizzas which can be supported or which can be made by this pizza maker we will have to add more cases to this make pizza function to handle the different or new types of pizza types which would be supplied as arguments for example if now apart from tomato we also want this pizza maker to be able to create a mushroom pizza in that case we will have to add a new case over here and then we will have to handle the mushroom pizza type and then we will have to do what we need to do to bake a mushroom pizza and this line is just to indicate that a mushroom pizza is being baked but you get the idea right in order for us to add the feature for this pizza maker to be able to bake new kinds of pizzas we will have to make modifications to this make pizza function when we will do that then ideally we will have to test this entire method or we may even have to again test this entire pizza maker class this is where writing code by following the open close principle can help us because in that case we won't have to make much modifications to this existing pizza maker class or this pizza make function so now i will show you how this entire class structure can be modified so that it will support the open close principle in a more meaningful way to do that we will not use this existing pizza maker class and i'm just going to create a new class which will be called as um let's just call it upgraded pizza maker now this upgraded pizza maker class is also going to have the private pizza oven implementation because i mean we will need an oven right to bake the pizza so let's have it over here too and now let's create the constructor for this upgraded pizza maker within this you know what we need to do we need to initialize the new pizza oven object now it's time to create the make pizza function but this time this is going to be different from the previous pizza maker class in which we were supplying the type of pizza as an argument over here we will supply the entire pizza class as an argument so let's just see how it's done as you can see the pizza class has not been created yet so let's just create a new pizza class which is going to act as base pizza we are going to have a protected pizza ingredients type over here so let's just call it ingredients to identify what kind of pizza this is we are going to create a new field a private field of type pizza type and then a public property which is just going to return this pizza type and now i will create the constructor for this pizza class so let's just do that now within this pizza constructor we are going to provide the argument for the type of pizza so let's just do that this type is going to be set into the private pizza type now this is a base pizza class so we are going to set the base ingredients for the pizza and for that i'm going to create a new protected virtual void and then set ingredients ingredients function now by looking at it you must have already guessed that this is virtual so it is meant to be overridden by the child classes which will implement the base pizza class so the entire idea behind this approach is going to be that this is a base pizza class and the child classes are going to be used to implement the different flavors for this base pizza so let's say if you want to have a tomato flavored pizza then we are going to have a different pizza class for the tomato flavor similarly we can have a different class for the mushroom flavor and so on so getting back to this set ingredients function i'm just going to um, add the console.write line over here which will simply say that this is a method to set the base pizza ingredients the last function that i am going to create for this pizza class is going to be called as make 
yeah you heard that right we will need a make function over here too along with the one which we are going to have in the upgraded pizza maker class so this make function is going to accept the argument for the pizza oven although this make function can initialize its own instance of the pizza oven but let's just leave the responsibility for initializing the pizza oven to the upgraded pizza maker because the pizza oven can have different properties set like its temperature or the amount of time we need to preheat the oven so let's just delegate the responsibility to initialize the oven to the upgraded pizza maker so this is going to be called as oven and then we will simply call oven dot bake and now the ingredients that are over here are going to be supplied as an argument to bake the pizza and that's it now let's get back to the make pizza function of the upgraded pizza maker over here we are just going to write to the console the type of pizza which is being baked by this upgraded pizza maker and then we will simply call pizza.make so let's just write a line to the console what kind of pizza is being baked over here so making pizza and this token will be replaced by the um, the pizza type so pizza dot pizza type and then finally we will simply call pizza dot make now you see that we need to supply the argument for the pizza oven and that can be supplied from over here the pizza oven which is private and that's pretty much all we need to do to make the pizza maker follow the open course principle now to make a tomato pizza we are just going to extend this base pizza class and we will not be making modifications to any of the existing classes so let's just do that so class tomato pizza this is going to be inherited from the base pizza class first we will just create the tomato pizza constructor so tomato pizza now this constructor is going to call the base constructor by providing the type of the pizza which is the um, the tomato flavored pizza so this can be done like this base and then pizza type dot tomato and let's just keep the body of this tomato pizza constructor as empty because we don't really need to do anything else over here next we will need to override the set ingredients function to make sure that we are providing the ingredients for the tomato pizza so for that i'm just going to copy this set ingredients function from over here um, replace virtual with override and then over here i'm going to replace base with tomato now over here you can also call base dot set ingredients if you first want to set the ingredients for the base pizza and then you want to set the ingredients for the tomato pizza it doesn't really matter for this example as long as you are understanding what is going on over here so if you are calling base dot set ingredients then you can leave this function as it is if you are not calling the base set ingredients function then you will need to initialize the um, the new ingredients object because it is being done in the set ingredients now to make a tomato pizza all we need to do is to simply first create a new tomato pizza type of object next we will create a new object for the upgraded pizza maker and then finally we will simply call upgraded pizza maker dot make pizza and then we will provide this tomato pizza as an argument let's just run this code to see what is being printed on the console so you can see that making tomato pizza is being written over here so in the previous pizza maker class if we wanted to extend this class to be able to make a new type of pizza then we had to add a new case for this pizza maker class and we had to make modifications to the existing class but over here for this upgraded pizza maker we don't have to do any such thing all we need to do is to simply extend this pizza class so for example we can extend this pizza class to create a new mushroom pizza class and that's pretty much it we are not making any kind of changes to the existing classes and now to be able to bake a new mushroom pizza all we need to do is to first create the type of mushroom pizza and then provide this mushroom pizza as an argument to this upgraded pizza maker dot make pizza function and that's it now you can see that the console has making mushroom pizza printed now this is obviously a very simple example and in all probability things are not going to be this simplistic in a project but you get the idea right 
The goal is to structure the code so that it can be extended whenever we have to by creating new entities like classes without disturbing the existing code logic or at least keeping the changes to a bare minimum. Do let me know your thoughts on this. Also, if you have questions, then feel free to post them in the comments. That would be everything for this video. If you like it, then please be sure to place a like on it and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that already and you will always be the first to know about new videos. You can also join our discord server if you have any questions or confusion about the content which is posted in this channel. The link is given in the video description. I am Nitej and I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care of yourselves and have fun.